Good morning, Journey Church. It's great to be with you once again by way of the internet. We thank you for joining together with us. And as I've been saying, we may be physically separated, but we are united in the spirit. And I believe God has something special for each and every one of us today. And so let's just enter into his presence and, uh, and receive what it is that he has for us this morning. Well, at this particular time in the service, we're going to get into the Word of God. And we're going to uh, be talking to you this morning about how God's Word is like seed. God's Word is seed. And so um, we're going to uh, do something a little different. I'm going to look at some very specific uh, verses and go through those and, and look at, at the Word being seed. But before we do that, if you don't mind, I'm going to just read a passage of Scripture to you to set the stage. And it's uh, contained in Luke chapter 8, um, beginning with verse number 4. And if you have your Bible sitting there, you can read along with me if you want. Uh, we're not going to have this particular passage up on the screen. Uh, we will have the other verses on there. But um, I just thought I would give us a little context and read um, from which we're going to get our lead verse. Luke chapter 8, beginning with verse 4, it says, When a great multitude had gathered, and they had come to him from every city, he spoke by a parable. A sower went out to sow his seed, and as he sowed, some fell by the wayside, and it was trampled down, and the birds of the air devoured it. Some fell on the rock, and as soon as it sprang up, it withered away because it lacked moisture. And some fell among thorns, and the thorns sprang up, and choked it. But others fell on good ground, sprang up, and yielded a crop a hundredfold. When he had said these things, he cried, He who has ears to hear, let him hear. Then his disciples asked him, saying, What does this parable mean? And he said, To you it has been given to know the mysteries of the kingdom of God, but to the rest it is given in parables that 
seeing they may not see, and hearing they may not understand. Now the parable is this. The seed is the word of God. Those by the wayside are the ones who hear when the devil comes and takes away the word out of their hearts, lest they should believe and be saved. But the ones on the rock are those who, when they hear, receive the word with joy, and these having no root, who believe for a while in the time of temptation fall away. Now the ones that fell among thorns are those who, when they have heard, go out and are choked with cares, riches, and pleasures of life, and bring, for, bring no fruit to maturity. But the ones that fell on the good ground are those who, having heard uh, the word with a noble and a good heart, keep it and bear fruit with patience. You know, most people expect God's word to work like dynamite, like a stick of dynamite that you light, you throw it out there, and it just explodes. And there's this immediate result, this immediate impact. But God's word is like a seed. And that's what Jesus said in Luke chapter 8, verse 11, out of the passage we just read. He said the parable is this, the seed is the word of God. So Jesus uses this um, parable, this story, this illustration to be able to teach them a truth, and he compares the word to a seed. Now the Holy Spirit, through the apostle Peter, um, also compared God's word to seed. In 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 23, it says, having been born again, not of corruptible seed, but incorruptible, through the word of God, which lives and abides forever. So the word of God is an incorruptible seed that's planted. So God's word is alive. And just like a seed, the Bible is full of unseen life. This book contains so many verses, so many promises, so many principles, so many truths, and they are seed that can be planted in our heart and produce abundant crops in our lives. Crops of salvation, crops of healing, crops of provision, um, any number of different things, that uh, promises that uh, they contain. Now, um, in John 6, verse uh, 63, it says, It is the Spirit who gives life, and the flesh profits nothing. The words that I speak to you are spirit, and they are life. So as we said, God's Word is alive. It's different than other books. You know, um, it looks like other books. It has a cover. It has binding. It has pages. It has... Um, the words imprinted from a printing press on there. And so it may look like another book, but the Bible is, is unlike any other book in the world. It is alive. The, it's the words in there, not the physical pages, not, not um, the ink that is on the pages, but it's the words themselves that are spirit and they are life. The Word of God is alive. It's supernatural. Jesus said his words are alive. He said that they contain life. So the words in your Bible, they may look lifeless and they may look powerless when you open it up. It may not stand out to, stand out to you, but just like seeds um, that don't have uh, anything impressive in and of themselves when you look at them, um, there is power in them. There is life in them. And Jesus again taught that the kingdom of God is like a seed. In Mark chapter 4, verse number 30, and we're going to read verse 30 and 31, it says, Then he said, to, to what shall we liken the kingdom of God? Or with what parable shall we picture it? It's like a mustard seed, which when it is sown on the ground is smaller than all seeds on the earth. You know, Jesus frequently used illustrations um, to help us to understand spiritual truth. He would take some natural illustration, something that we could get our head around, um, that we could understand very simply, very easily, and that, that within that illustration there was a spiritual truth contained. And, um, and so he's telling us that the Word of God and the Kingdom of God, it's like a seed. You know, in the, in the parable of the mustard seed where he said that it's like a 
mustard seed that that it's the smallest of seeds but it grows into a a tree in which the birds of the air can land on the bushes it's ever growing it's ever expanding and it's a lot bigger than than the seed that starts out so it might be unimpressive at first when you look at it but this book contains life and i want you to get that this morning it is so important for us to treasure this book because this book is treasure um, examining a thing in the natural will help give insight into how the thing works in the spiritual realm. Jesus used seeds as an example. So what we're going to do this morning is take a few minutes to um, look at seeds, how seeds work, and look at how that can apply in, in a spiritual way. Um, first of all, let's uh, once again bring out the fact that a seed is alive. You know, when you look at it, it may not look like it, but a seed contains life in it. Our physical senses are not capable of, of comprehending or seeing that life. You can't, you can't see it, you can't hear it, you can't smell it, you can't taste it, you can't feel the life that's in that seed, but there is life in the seed. The only way to prove that there's life in the seed is to plant it and let it do what it was destined to do. So, Building on that, a seed doesn't do anything until it's planted. See, there's life in that seed, but it won't do anything until you plant it. You know, you can have seed in seed packets for years, and there's nothing going to happen. You're not going to have plants growing out of that seed packet. It's not until you open that packet and you plant those seeds in the ground that they'll do what God created them to do. And so sitting on a shelf is not going to get anything done. You may have a bunch of packets of seeds that you bought at the hardware store or the feed store. Put them on, on your shelf, your workbench in the garage, and, and figured, okay, one day on good weather, I'm going to go out there and plant them and, and just leave them there for a long time, and they're not going to accomplish anything. Well, you know, that's what a lot of people do with their Bible. You know, again, the Bible is seed but they'll just leave it on their coffee table. They'll leave it on the end table. They might even have it right next to their bed, but they never open it up, and all it does is gather dust. God expects us to open this up and, and read it, to, to listen to it, and have it planted in our hearts. You know, the, the, the soil is our heart, as we've seen. So the seed's not going to do anything till it's planted. The Bible's not going to do anything. It contains all the promises that are yes and amen. It contains the answers to whatever it is that you have need of in your life right now. It contains um, promises about healing. It contains promises about provision. It contains promises um, uh, for salvation. It contains so many promises. It contains principles that um, can change your life and cause you to have abundant life. But if you don't plant it in, your, in, in the soil of your heart, it's not going to be able to produce results. It's going to be like a packet of seeds. It's just going to sit there and accomplish nothing. So a seed has to be planted, and it needs to be planted in the proper place. The best way to plant a seed or the seed of God's Word um, is to speak the Word yourself. You know, yes, you're hearing me preach the word you're hearing the bible this morning you're hearing the seed of the word of god and it is being planted in your in your heart but the most effective way to plant the seed of god's word in your personal life is for you to read it out loud you to say it out loud you to confess it and when you do that it will be effective in being planted in your own heart Hearing others speak the word of God, as I said, it'll produce a bountiful, it, it, it will do good, but it will produce a bountiful harvest when you speak it yourself. As we speak God's word, we're planting the seed in our own heart and the harvest of results that we desire. Uh, find the seed, you know, or the promises that are dealing with the situation that you're going through in your life and feed on that. Romans chapter 10, verse number 10 says, for with the heart one believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. So um, 
So the Apostle Paul teaches us this principle that we start by believing in our heart, but it's when we confess with our mouth that it's unto the thing that we're believing for. We're believing in salvation, believing that Jesus is the Savior, believing that He died to wash our sins away, that His blood will cleanse us. Well, we believe that in our heart, but it's when we confess Jesus with our mouth, we confess Him as Lord and Savior with our mouth, that is when salvation will, will come. So it's believing in the heart and then confession unto whatever it is that you have need of. You could say it like this, that whatever you need to be saved from, saved from or delivered from, that confession or what you say is essential in receiving the answer. A seed is much smaller than the plant that it produces. That's something to understand about a seed. It starts out a whole lot smaller than, than what it is ultimately um, created to do. Think about an acorn and how small it is. It's just like a small stone. And yet it grows into a mighty oak, a huge tree. And so a problem that you have in your life may, may seem huge, and the seed or the promise in the Word of God that you're, that you're looking to that's going to have life in it and produce the answer for you, it may seem small and insignificant in its current form, but just understand once again that it's a seed and it will grow into what God created it to grow into, just like the acorn grows into the mighty oak. So when planted, the Word of God will grow in you and will ultimately overcome the problem. It will grow and produce the solution that you need. But when planted, um, uh, you've got you to gotta be patient. And we're going to see that throughout the message this morning. That's what we read um, in, the, in the scripture today. Now, another thing about seed is that it always will produce after its own kind. A seed is, is um, created to, to produce after its own kind. So an uh, acorn is going to produce an oak tree. Um, corn, you know, the seed of corn, the kernels of corn planted are not going to produce an oak tree. They're going to produce corn. <laughs> They're going to produce stalks of corn with ears on there, and we can enjoy and eat those. And so a seed will produce after its own kind. You're not going to plant green beans, the seeds of green beans in the ground and expect to, to receive peas you're going to get green beans. And if you plant pea seeds, you're going to get peas. Seeds produce after their own kind. And so um, let's look at Galatians chapter 6, verse number 7. It says, Do not be deceived. God is not mocked. For whatever a man sows, that will he also reap. So whatever you sow, you reap. It will reproduce after its own kind. And so um, it's important to know that principle so that when you're in need and you, you uh, um, need an answer from God, that you're going to go to the right seed packet and get the seed that is going to produce what you have need of. If you have healing as a need in your life, you have illness, sickness, disease, um, you're not going to go to uh, the financial provision seed packet. You're going to go to the healing seed packet. And so go to the seed or the promises that pertain to whatever it is you need and plant those seeds so that you'll get that harvest because they're going to produce after their own kind. Whatever you desire, you want to you wanna, um, find scriptures that relate to that, plant those seeds in your heart, and, and then um, you can expect uh, the, the fruit to come forth from that. And plant them in abundance, as, as we'll see in a moment. Now, Another thing, a thing about seeds that I wanted to bring out to you this morning is that seeds are powerful. They may be small, and you put it in the ground, it's just a small little thing. But as that seed um, begins to grow, it pushes up the dirt, it'll push rocks out of the way, there might be a twig there, and it'll push it out of the way, um, and just continue to go upward and burst forth out of the ground because it's going to grow toward the sun. Seeds are meant to, to burst forth and come out and thrive in the sunlight. In our own life, whatever obstacles that we may be facing, God's Word planting in our life 
will push those obstacles out of the way and, uh, and produce the result. The Word of God is seed, and seeds are powerful. So just like natural seeds will, will push obstacles out of the way in order to burst forth out of the ground and grow into the plant that they were destined to grow into, God's Word planted in our heart, it is powerful, it is mighty, and it will push obstacles out of the way. Hallelujah. Another thing about seeds that I want to look at this morning is that, that the seed begins its growth um, underground. It begins its growth in secret. It's unseen. The only way to tell if a seed is growing is to dig it up, or better, wait for it to appear. <laughs> you know, I remember when I was a kid, Kellogg's, Kellogg's Corn Flakes used to put um, a, a prize inside their packages. Often it would be a baseball card and you know, and, and with a little piece of gum in it, and uh, and those were nice. But there was a time that they were putting packets of seeds in there, and in the box of cornflakes that I got one year, um, it had um, uh, packets of flowers, and I think they were zinnias or something. Um, it had the picture on there, and it was it was a pl a flower that had like a long stem, pretty, you know, uh, bloom. And, uh, and so I took my seeds and I went out in my backyard and got a little spade out of the garage, dug a little hole, poured those seeds into that hole, covered it up, watered them. And, uh, and then, you know, in the days ahead, I would go out water. And, and over time, I, I forgot about them. Every day I would go out there and look to see if, if flowers were out there. I'm just a little guy. And, uh, and nothing. You didn't see anything. And I, I actually had, had planted them in, in a few holes, you know, put a little bit in each one. And so, you know, there's nothing there where the, the few holes that I had dug were. And, and, you know, and I just, I didn't see it. Well, I could have dug them up to see if something was happening under there. And you can do that. And you might have seen where there's a little sprout that had begun to, to come forth. But when you dig some, a seed up, you're more than likely going to kill it. And so you just have to be patient and believe and trust that it is doing what it's designed to do. So it starts out unseen. And the Word of God being a seed is like that. Often that promise that you plant in your heart, you believe in your heart, you confess with your mouth, you may not see anything at first. But I guarantee you it's doing what God created it to do. And so you've got to just be patient and let it do, once again, what God created it to do. Amen. And so just building on that, uh, uh, something that we understand about seeds, they start unseen, under the ground. Um, a seed takes time to produce. And so just like you've got to allow it time... Eventually, those things burst forth. They're little green sprouts. And, you know, and then they, they grew and grew into the full flowers, and then the blooms eventually came. It took time for that process to happen. And, you know, the Bible talks about seed time and harvest, and seed time means the time of planting and then harvest. But a minister years ago had God just kind of um, just take those, the, that word seed time and, and spread it apart and saw a principle about seeds, which is absolutely true, we all understand it, is that it's seed, time, and then harvest. It's seed and then time before you get the harvest. And that time in different seeds at different times, it's different. You know, some seeds produce right away, and you can see results very quickly. Other seeds may take longer, but there is seed, there is time, and there is harvest. And that process is always the same. And so it takes time to produce. No one expects a, a seed in the natural to produce a harvest the same day, unless you're a little kid like me, and you, you expect, you know, you're looking there waiting for something to happen or the, the very next day. Well, it's got its own order of things. It was created to work a certain way, and God's power is working. That creation is working, um, but it has to have the time to produce the result. In this case, um, a flower that I had planted. Now, another kind of plant is apples. 
you can take apple seeds and put them in the ground, dig a hole, put them in the ground just like I did those zinnia flowers or whatever they were, and uh, and it'll eventually come out of the ground. It'll sprout forth, burst forth from the ground, and it'll even grow into a tree. But you know, that tree is not going to have apples on it the first year. From what I've been taught, what I understand, is it actually takes seven years for an apple tree, once it grows into a tree, to begin to produce apples that you begin to harvest. And then every year after that, it will produce apples. But there's time involved, seven years, from the time it grows into the tree until it starts producing the apples that, that you and I would enjoy. And so we have to know that just like in the natural, that we're not going to have the fruit of the seed uh, the same day, we don't always have the fruit of the seed of the Word of God manifested the same day. There is seed of the Word of God that gets planted in the hearts of individual um, by somebody. They witness to them. They give them the good news of the gospel. And then over time, they may have others come into their life who, who water that seed. And eventually, someone may come along, uh, present the gospel to them yet again. They hear the good news of Jesus the forgiveness of sins that is available through uh, Jesus. And then what ends up happening is that they're saved. Well, there was seed that was planted and there was time that, that came forth before the harvest of salvation occurred. I know in my own life, I, I know of some of those instances, some of those times that occurred where the seed was planted, others watering, um, and then eventually I gave my life to Jesus Christ at the age of 16 years old. And so the Word of God sometimes um, needs to be allowed time to produce. It will bear fruit. It will do what it was created to do. Now, if we knew all the details, if we would understand um, how the fruit of the Word of God grew in some person's life over time, uh, we, would, we, would, we would have so much more because people give up on it. <laughs> you know, they just, they just walk away from that promise. Um, allow the time to occur. It takes time to produce. Here's another principle about seeds that I want to share with you. A seed is persistent. See, a seed never gives up. A seed works day and night. It doesn't go to sleep. From the moment you plant it in the earth, it begins to do what God created it to do. And night and day, it's going to do that. And uh, even when we're sleeping, the seed that we've planted is working to grow and, and eventually produce the fruit. So when the seed of the Word of God is planted in our life, when, when we're awake, when we're asleep, whenever we're doing, that seed is working. And we, and we need to trust in that process, trust in what God created for it to do, and, uh, and eventually in time, in its time, in harvest time, based on that seed, we're going to see the fruit come, be able to harvest. So be patient, allow the seed to accomplish what it was sent to do. Um, a scripture, one of my favorite passages in the Bible, uh, alludes to that in Isaiah 55, verse number 11. Now understand, this is God talking. Isaiah 55, 11 says this, so shall my word be that goes forth out of my mouth. It shall not return to me void, but it shall accomplish what I please, and it shall prosper in the thing for which I sent it. God said that he sends forth his word. And then he says that that word won't return to him void, which means empty or powerless. And so, um, so when he sends forth his word, which we know is like a seed, and we return that to him, remember where I said you believe in your heart, there's the seed that God sends forth that's planted in our heart, and then what do we do? We believe that, and then we confess that, Romans 10.10. 10. So, um, um, so we believe in our heart, and then we confess with our mouth, whatever that is, and we'll receive what it is. So God says, I send forth my word. It won't return to me void, but it will accomplish what I please, 
it will prosper in the thing that I sent it to do. It will produce after its own kind. He sent that promise specifically to produce a specific result. And when we believe in our heart, we can return it to him in prayer. We confess that word. Lord, you said in your word that by uh, his stripes, I was healed. You said that healing is the children's bread. And so I just thank you, Lord, that, that um, healing is mine. I believe what you said. I return that to you. I put you in remembrance of your word. And I just thank you that your word is producing results. I believe your promise. And I receive that. I ask you to heal me even as you promised to do. Thank you for healing me, Lord. Thank you for that. Then you continue to confess that. Oh, thank God I'm healed. It says in his word, by his stripes I was healed. It says in his word, healing is the children's bread. It says in his word that he healed everyone who came to him in faith. Jesus healed them all. He healed multitudes. And so, so that will produce what God sent it to do when we do what we're supposed to do. See, God sends it. Our part is to return it in faith. And then his part, it's like a, a, a game of chess. God makes a move. He sends his word that's planted in our heart. Our move, our thing is to believe that word and then confess it, return it to him in a prayer of faith, in a confession of faith. We return that word to him. So we've made our move. Now it's back to God. Then he will cause it to prosper in what he sent it to do, to accomplish what he pleases. Okay, another thing about seeds that we can look at today is that a seed is not affected by other seeds. Really, really important to know. Whatever happens to other seeds does not make any difference to a specific seed. Each seed will stick to its own task. Each seed will do what it was created to do. So you can have one seed planted in a, in a cornfield and that seed isn't going to be impacted by all the corn seeds doing what they're doing, producing corn. No, it's going to still grow into a stalk of wheat. <laughs> a wheat seed will not produce corn. It will still produce wheat. It's not affected by uh, what other seeds are doing, whatever's going on around it. A seed does not become discouraged. It doesn't quit even if other seeds around it happen to die. Um, that seed is going to do what it was created to do, uh, even if disturbances happen, other things, you know, go on with other seeds. It's not going to be impacted by that. It's not going to give up. It's not going to lose hope. It's going to just do what it was created to do. And so we can learn from that, that, that we need to, Trust the process. Trust what God's created His Word to do, what He sent His Word to do. And know that He will cause it to accomplish what He wants it to do. Um, it, will, it will accomplish what He pleases. It will prosper in the thing that He sent it to do. And so, so we need to just, uh, again, trust that process, let it do what it's supposed to do. Don't become discouraged. Don't throw up your hands and quit. You, know, you might be quitting right before it bursts forth out of the ground. Now, another thing that we can look at is that a seed will stop growing if it doesn't have the proper nourishment. You know, it's well and good to put the dig the hole and put the seed in the ground like I did with those flower seeds. But if I didn't water that and, and go out there and water those initially, um, you know, every day, those seeds weren't going to accomplish anything, even though they'd be put under the ground. They have to be nourished. And so planting a seed is not enough to ensure a harvest. A seed has to be protected, and it has to be taken care of until the time of harvest. So a seed that's not watered is not going to produce fruit. And so... Um, the Word of God, the Bible, is, is described as, as a seed. You know, it's also described as water. Uh, we need to water it. We need to, to nourish it. You know, I know there's chemical processes. Water produces, releases minerals and feeds and nourishes the seed, and it can grow, you know, and, 
and even as, as a plant, it needs to be nourished. It needs to be watered um, for it to grow into its fullness and then produce fruit. You know, those flowers grew up, you know, and started to get tall, but they didn't have the bloom on them for a while. There was a, you know, eventually there was a bud and then the buds opened up and wow, was that awesome. But there was a process and I continued to water them throughout that process. That's why they made it. Had I just went out there and just went out and looked out the window every day or just walked out and glanced at it but not been going out there and watering them, even after they became sprouts and started to grow up, I'd have never seen the full bloom of those colored, colorful flowers that they turned out to be. And so we need to nourish the seed of the Word of God that's planted in our heart. And, you know, and, and being in a good atmosphere to protect it, a good environment, that's a good thing. You know, be amongst people of like precious faith. You know, don't have seed killers uh, um, around you. You know, don't don't let other distractions, temptations, and trials discourage you. You know, uh, Netflix isn't going to get you healed. YouTube's not going to get you saved. CBS isn't going to produce material provision in your life. Let's let's take the time that we have um, right now and and meditate on God's word. Spend some time in the Bible. You know, with what's going on in our life, we have more time than we've had in a while. A lot of people are talking about that 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 they're catching their breath that they're that their uh, schedules have lightened up. They're not going out and doing so many things because of the stay-at-home orders, and so. They've got time on their hands. Well, you could produce that, you know, uh, use that, utilize that time. Been watching, you know, every TV series that's ever been created, and it's it's going to entertain you. It's going to occupy your time, but it's not going to produce the life results that the Word of God can produce. So I encourage you take time to read the Word of God. Meditate on the Word of God. Get that seed of God's Word planted in your heart. If you've got things in your life that you have need of, issues that are going on, study the Word. Look for the, the promises that pertain to what it is that you have need of, the answers you need. And then plant that seed in your heart. Say it out loud. Be confessing that Word. Confessing what it says, like I did a little bit ago as an example. Just continue to confess that word. Say that word. Nourish it. And it will eventually produce. And then the last thing I want to share with you this morning is that the more seeds you plant, uh, the larger the harvest is going to be. I had one little packet of flower seeds, and so I had those few holes, and so it ended up that I had, you know, I forget, um, you know, maybe six, seven flowers that came up. They just a long stem and then just had this bloom on them. And uh, had I had a whole bunch of that and planted rows and rows of it, I could have had a field of those flowers. If I had a whole bunch of them, I could have planted them all real close together and they, they could have just just been, you know, just look like all color and not even see the stems when I'm looking down on them. But I had individual flowers kind of spread out um, as I had planted the seeds. Those holes weren't like little round holes. They were like little elongated holes, spread some seed, dug the next one as I had seed, and I did like three holes of what I had seed. These were little tiny seeds, and it produced. So the principle is the more seeds that you plant, the bigger the harvest. Um, you put, you know, the the kernels of one ear of corn in, in a row, you might get a few stalks of corn. But if you have uh, multiple uh, ears of corn and, and get all the seed, the kernels off, and you plant a field, you'll have a whole corn field. So very simple in the natural, the more seeds you plant, the greater the harvest. Let's look at 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 6. It says, But this I say to you, he who sows sparingly will also reap sparingly, but he who sows bountifully will also reap bountifully. So the more seed you plant, the bigger the harvest, the bigger the crop, and a seed will produce after its own kind. Well, I hope this uh, time in the Word this morning has, has been fruitful to you. I've planted seed, or I've sown some seed, 
Um, and I believe that if uh, if you'll nurture that seed, it can produce some some harvest. Um, specifically for us that are watching this morning, it may be a harvest of of reading our Bibles. Um, you know, uh, becoming sowers, looking for for all the different seeds in the Word of God. And if we have need of healing, we're going to go, you know, to the Word of God and find the packets of seeds that talk about healing. If we have a need for financial provision, for material needs to be met, then we might go to the Word of God and look for those seed packets that deal with provision. My God supplies all my needs according to His riches and glory by Christ Jesus. Um, healing, you know, uh, we quoted some of those verses. If we need, uh, you know, um, salvation for our children, you know, for our neighbor, for our coworker, and we're believing God for someone to be saved, and then we're going to look for seeds of salvation and just believe on those and, and, and sow those and, and nur nurture those and believe for a harvest of salvation to occur. I've talked about different kinds of seed. I've referred in examples to different things. And I just, I'm believing God that, that it's going to produce harvest. People are going to act on this. They're going to do what I've taught and, and see salvations in their lives. Maybe you're watching today and you've never accepted Jesus Christ and you're hearing this message, but you feel the Spirit of God drawing you to Himself. Well, that seed of the Word of God that's been planted in your life perhaps years ago by someone else watered by others maybe it's the day that it's going to produce the harvest for you and god um, is ready to bring you into his kingdom the scripture says today is the day of salvation and so you can be saved today and uh and all you have to do is pray a simple prayer with me now i'm going to pray a general prayer before i give opportunity to pray the prayer of salvation i want to pray a general prayer over the word as we close uh, this message out. And, uh, and then I'm going to lead people in a prayer for salvation. Let's pray together. Father, we thank you so much for the seed of the Word of God that's went forth. And I believe, and I know other people are joining together and believing with me that, that a harvest uh, is coming forth. People are going to receive healing who need healing. People are going to need uh, receive provision who have need of provision. We're going to have a harvest of souls. People are going to be saved as a result of your word today. And we thank you for these things. I thank you, Lord, that this message is challenging individuals who are already believers, children of God, children of God, to invest time in studying the Bible, reading the Bible, um, searching the scriptures, and identifying the scriptures that that deal with the things that they have need of in their life, and that they will plant those various seeds in the soil of their heart or in the soil of other people's hearts that they know need it and that we are going to see uh, a harvest, a bountiful harvest, uh, a bumper crop, and we give you praise and glory for that. Now for those who feel that draw to you, Lord, that, that, that salvation, today is the day of salvation for them, I thank you for them just following along with me in a prayer as they just repeat after me, Father God, I believe that Jesus is your son. You sent him to earth to die for my sins. He paid the penalty that I deserved. And because of his death, his burial and resurrection, that I can have new life. I believe this. I believe in my heart in Jesus Christ. I believe that His blood can wash my sins away. I ask You, Lord Jesus, to come into my heart now to save me from my sin, to wash me and cleanse me of unrighteousness. I believe You've done this because I've prayed this prayer. And I believe that I am now born again, a child of God, and I will live forever with You. Thank you for saving me in Jesus' name. Wow. Well, if you prayed that prayer this morning, I'm going to ask for you to get a hold of me. Reach out to me by way of private message. 
uh, you can use our website and just uh, click on the contact uh, tab and send me a, a, a message. It'll email me and just tell me, I prayed that prayer with you, Pastor Ray. I'm born again. The seed of the word of God has produced a harvest of salvation today in my life. You don't have to say all of those things. You can just tell me I prayed that prayer with you and I will rejoice and celebrate right along with you. Now, what I encourage you to do in the days ahead and never stop this journey, but just start out um, this week by reading one chapter of the Bible every day. A great place to start is in the Gospel of John. Uh, open up the New Testament, go to the Gospel of John, and for this next week, read one chapter every day, and you'll begin to get to know your Lord Jesus better. And then just never stop. Just keep on going. Read the rest of that Gospel, and just continue as God leads you to read the uh, the whole Bible. Um, we all ought to be reading every day. And, uh, and we just celebrate with you. Now, for all of you, thank you for joining together with me in this Sunday morning service. I know this is different. You're sitting on your couches, sitting in your chairs, um, might be in your pajamas this morning. And, um, and so it's a little bit different, but I just want to encourage you with this hope and this, this promise that this too will pass, that this is going to end, and we're all going to be gathered together again real soon, and we're going to get to shake one another's hands, hug one another's necks, pat each other on the back, and just look each other in the eye. And I know I'm excited about that. I know you are, and it's going to happen before you know it. But in the meantime, we'll just see you on Wednesday night uh, by way of the Internet, and just want to say to you, God bless you. Jesus is Lord. Have a wonderful day.